Oh man. So first well, off, what? first off, man, I got I have to thank you because uh, you were one of the first ones to start everything up with this business from Jump Street. Uh, you had enough, you know, in, insight to believe in, in what I could do. And really because of you is really what started up this business. And so I have to thank you personally for everything, the support, the encouragement. And I just wish you like the absolute best, especially with what you're doing as of right now. Oh man, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you for, you know, always being in touch and keeping in touch and keeping up with everything I got going on right now, man. And it's it's just a blessing. I'm just watching your journey and I'm watching you take off with your craft and everything you're doing. So once again, I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Thank you. So let's start off with this question, man. Uh, for the for the journey from you going into college to the pros, uh, how was that experience for you, especially in these first few years going in? Uh, going from college to the pros, man, it was just, it was a major jump, man, you know, especially going from a smaller school like ULM, you know, first of all, just playing in front of, you know, maybe 15, 20,000, and then you go to the NFL, man, it's 70, 80,000 people, so that was a big jump, just being under the bright lights, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of the kids that played at, you know, Alabama and LSU, you know, they, they, that's NFL spotlight to me already in, in the college uh, form. So, you know, just going from that to, you know, the pros for them is probably an easier transition than going from, you know, ULM to the pros. But, you know, I feel like I, you know, I adjusted to it pretty well. That's good. That's good, man. Well, how about, uh, especially with these times of COVID-19 being a big problem, and it hinders a lot of progression, especially when it comes down to the fans, because the fans always bring the energy, the fans always bring the support, love and encouragement. Uh, how are you able to adjust that, and especially bringing everything back into it slowly? Um, COVID definitely messed up a lot of things. I know I had, um, you know, I was with the Eagles uh, beginning the camp, like July, August, and then I was released in November. And after that, uh, I got calls from the Cleveland Browns, uh, the Arizona Cardinals, and I would go to work out. And I had the COVID test for a week before I could even, you know, try out. And both those tryouts that I had uh, actually ended up getting canceled due to either a player or a coach getting COVID. So, you know, COVID has definitely ruined two, two big opportunities for me, man. But, you know, I just keep my head on straight and I, you know, keep my head down. I keep working. Uh, I'm staying in shape. I work out every day as best as I can. Spend time with my family and, you know, just waiting to get my break. Most definitely. Most definitely. And really, the, uh, the, the, the problem with that is when you got players such as yourself uh, with a lot of talent that usually goes from team to team because a lot of teams are still not even playing. Uh, yeah. As far as, you know, the, not even through the playoffs, not even through uh, whatever goes down. Um, and it makes it difficult for, like I said, players such as yourself to really showcase your talent or, or just get out there and play the game that you love. Right. And, and when you're with a team, it's so easy to, I mean, you, you have your workout set up, uh, you have, you're on a itinerary on a daily basis. So, I mean, it's kind of easier, but when you, you know, when you're at home, like it's on you to make sure you work out every day. I don't have anybody, you know pushing me to, to you know get up and work out or make sure I do this or that like it's all on me so you know I've, I've done a pretty good job of you know main schedule of waking up uh you know eating at the right time the same pretty much the same schedule I was on that's why I'm glad I was able to be around different teams and a bunch of different guys and you know I've talked to some of my friends that are currently playing and still in the league so you know, it's it's a blessing to even, you know, still get and take gems from them that they have and, and learn from them. So I'm still learning a lot, you know, also while not playing football right now. Gotcha. And as far as with the football, uh, I've also seen a couple of uh, close ULM alumni that have also supported your brand. Uh, oh, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about what you got? Um, so I started uh, MAGB. Uh, brand is uh, I have a clothing line too. Um, the website is magvofficial.com. But uh, I started that actually as I was going into the draft. Uh, 
you know, my agent reached out to me and, you know, I've seen a lot of players that have their own, their own brand. Um, the MAGV actually stands for, it's my initials, Marcus Antonio Green. Uh, my, mom, my mom got married. Her last name was Vaughn. You know, my stepdad, his last name is Vaughn, obviously. And so, you know, he started calling me that because at first he was gonna, he was gonna adopt me and my last name was gonna be Green Vaughn, but you know, I have two sisters who have the same last name as me. So I just wanted to keep that, you know, so I could have that with my sisters. And and finally, you know, I just took that nickname and I turned it into a brand. And, and I haven't looked back since. Hmm. And I've seen a lot of people uh, help uh, represent and put everything out there. Uh, and I was like, man, especially if you end up, if things don't, you know, pan out, as far as the league legs with COVID-19 being a play, you always have that to fall back on. And that just shows the amount of support, the amount of love that you got. Right. Uh, especially from, from other people that, that just look and see they know what a good person that you are. Right. And I actually have thought about uh, expanding the brand. Um, you know, since I've been off of football, I've been, you know, thinking of other ways. And, you know, I could put... I can put forth more time with my brand since I'm not doing football all day, every day. So uh, I just I've been finding ways to get my clothing actually into stores. Uh, I have friends. Uh, I have a friend who's actually about to open up a store, his own clothing line. And, you know, me and him have been in talks about, you know, getting some of my gear into his store. <laughs> See, that's a good right that's good investment right there, especially with that. Um, and some of the kids today actually have to know that and understand that that uh, there are other alternatives, uh, especially in this case, because most people will end up just going you know, to the NBA, to the NFL, uh, and just have it at that. And like most of the time that they feel like that's all they know how to do. And so they always have to give these new kids that are coming up alternatives. Uh as far as being successful, as far as getting the career, the life that they want to have. Right. And, you know, I've always been told my whole life, the NFL stands for not for long. So you know, in the midst of playing football and doing that, that's good. But, you know, it's always good to to have a backup plan. You know, I've uh, like I said, I got the clothing line. I've actually invested in uh, doing like a brand of uh, the massage guns, kind of like the Thera guns. Yeah, I've actually invested and partnered up with my guy Shane Butler, who runs SB Fitness. Uh, I don't know if you saw that video I shot the other day, but uh, you know I kind of partnered up with him and we did like a workout video. So I've been I've been uh, you know in talks with him about doing that, and you know I've also been looking into you know training younger kids, which is something something I didn't have growing up. I didn't have an older person my age, you know, showing me things that they learned, you know, in the pros or in college. So you know, that's always been a dream of mine, too, is to give back, you know, to the youth that want to do the things that I want to do. You know, you can start them out early. I didn't get an early start. You know, I started, I didn't start playing football until high school. And now I'm showing younger kids who are even in elementary school, middle school, you know, the things that I've learned so they can, you know, kind of get a head start into what they want to do. That's a good idea. And like, so most kids nowadays don't really have the camps. Um, uh, and and the opportunities because like I said once again once again because of COVID because it halted a lot of stuff. Yeah, COVID ruined a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, and so it's a blessing for you to still keep moving forward and to keep everything going in the way it's supposed to go. Right. Uh, so as soon as whenever <laughs> this uh, vaccine ends up hitting uh, and, and it shows promise, and hopefully we can get back to our daily lives and continue to do what we usually do. Right. And that's I can't wait to do that, man. You know, you know, some places are wide open. Some places are shut down. Like, you know, some places I see people not wearing a mask at all. Then I have to go to some places and people, everybody has a mask on. So, you know, I just I just take mine to stay safe because, like I said, you never know. You never know when you could get a call from a team. And I want to make sure that, you know, I'm free of it when I do get a call. And, you know, hopefully I get a call soon. Right, and that's the scary thing about it, though. Like I said, there's nothing on you. They've seen what you can do. Uh, it's just that they have to take precautions. Almost every single place that nowadays has to take precautions. Right. And so, well, as far as playing football, uh, you said you've been playing football since uh, since the end of high school. 
Yeah. So what did you play before then? Here at junior high, and then I, I was like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like football. So I went and focused on basketball, and I was actually in the band in middle school uh, playing the snare. And I got to high school, and uh, I think I was, I was actually in eighth grade, getting ready to go into ninth grade, and they were over the intercom, like, if you're going out for spring football, go get this for them and do this and do that. And so I was like, nah, I'm not playing football. I went to the gym for basketball practice that evening and so I was walking to the gym and the football coach had parked the gator literally right in front of the gym so I get there and he's like won't you come take a ride with me we circled around the campus of uh, my high school 10 minutes later I was trying on helmet and shoulder pads all over again ever since <laughs> never looked back and I always go back and thank my high school coach for even for making me play football pretty much and then <laughs> And I still, even my freshman and sophomore year of high school, I was out there, but I was just out there because I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't take it serious. And then, because I, you know, I had a bunch of D1 caliber guys in front of me. And then my junior year, you know, after they graduated, that's when I really took off. And I was like, I can get my school paid for doing this, man. And I, you know, I just took it and ran with it. <laughs> right. And, and see, the problem is that what most people don't know is that we ended up playing against each other uh, in college, like, multiple times in the NFL. I was just like, okay, if you don't uh, progress in football, you definitely got a chance at basketball. That's, <laughs> that is that the problem, see, that, with most people? <laughs> that was actually my first love, man, basketball. I've been playing basketball since I was three, four years old. Uh thought I was going to college to play basketball, which, I mean, I probably could have, but, you know, football, I, I think I'm basketball, I had a bunch of junior colleges. I could have played double sports at a junior college, but, you know, once ULM offered me, and that's not, that was the only D1 offer I had in uh, football, so, I, you know, I wanted to go to a four-year college and, you know, get my degree. If, you know, at the least, I wanted to get my degree, but, you know, I was blessed to get a degree and get drafted into the NFL, which, you know, a lot of people, especially from ULM, that doesn't happen. Right. You had to let these kids know today that education is important. Right. And, um, so you always have something to fall back on. But that's really the main thing. Um, and and with you teaching these kids now that are going to the camp, uh, or at least you try to give them as much advice as you can, uh, it always is important to let them know that education is, it always comes first. Um, That's the main thing nowadays. Like, even if you want the, a simple job, like nowadays, you got to have a degree even to, <laughs> like, to do anything. Like, it's not like you can just say, oh, I, I didn't go to school. Like, now a degree can get you so far and make you so much more extra money, like, these these younger kids don't realize that and that's why you know when i talk to them or I, like yesterday i went to my uh i went to my brother's school which is the elementary school i went to north Pontiac elementary and i met all the kids and took pictures with different classes and i just kind of spoke to them i was like education is important you know there were some kids who who might have you know stayed in trouble or been in trouble and but they, they're really good athletes at a young age. And I'm like, I was telling them like, you know, you can be the best player on the team, but if you don't make the grades, like you can be the worst player on the team or not even on the team at all. Right. And that's what I try to keep in them and to, you know, encourage them to keep their grades up and stay in, the, and stay in school. And then and as far as this case, uh, <laughs> with uh, having all of this being said and done, uh, how do you think people will start adjusting back in back into the stands? Of course, back into the crowd, the arenas, or even just coming up to you and just taking a picture with you. Uh, do you think though everything will start adjusting back to the way it was? Uh, with these vaccines, you know, I've been keeping up with it a little bit. Uh, I've seen so much COVID in the news. Honestly, sometimes like I'll see someone talking about it, and I just. I'll just turn the TV or change the channel. Like, I, I'm just like, man, I'm just sick of it at this point. But I, I eventually do think, you know, we'll get back to normalcy, especially with the vaccines coming in and stuff like that. Yeah, man. Uh, all we can end up just doing is just praying and hoping for the best, especially in 2021, man. Oh, yeah, same, man. I 
can't wait to get back to normalcy and especially with professional sports and what I want to do. You know, that's what I want to do the most. So hopefully we can get back to that. All right, man. And all right, though, man, it was a pleasure having you on here, especially as my first guest to start this off. Uh, once again, like I said, I thank you for starting this off because of you. And I have to say shout out to Justin Robertson as well. Because of both of y'all helping me out through college, man. <laughs> nah. yeah, both, of you, man. both of y'all helped me out uh, just from starting this off from the ground up I gotta give y'all your props man ultimately I appreciate you man what's going on you guys if you made it this far to this video please be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe to this channel also be sure to check out my website for some awesome merchandise and artwork thanks for watching and as always respect the craft